anyone else really enjoy watching AMP? AMP has built an absolute empire from their group. And with their content taking over the whole scene by a storm, Agent, Chris, Davis, Duke, Phantom, and Kai Sinat are all engineering a packful squad. Hi, I'm Saya G, and I make weekly commentary content on things that I find interesting myself. Today, we will experience the rise of AMP and its members. So let's take it to the beginning. AMP is a group that started in 2020. It was originally composed of rising 2K Twitch streamers. The streamers were Davis, The Duke, Agent, and Phantom. They started by creating collaborative content left and right and mostly feeding their audience sports related content. The content had less structure during this time but was still enjoyable even for me to watch. They were all well established great men of color that eventually produced over 140 videos to this day on that channel. And when I looked, I could only find one video on that channel that had less than a million views. I give my respect to this group and even RDC World for putting the world on to help black people impact the entertainment industry. And speaking of talent, let me introduce you to Kai Sinat. Kai Sinat right now in my opinion is the face of the group and I don't think there's any denying that. And despite him being the most recent member to join, Kai has struck the whole content creation world by a storm. I want to go ahead and call him the Kevin Hart of YouTube. Both high energy, both funny, and both unbelievably short. That's a lie. I cheated. Let's talk about it though. Let's figure it out. But don't let his height fool you, because what he lacks in bone length, he makes up for in personality. We need to recognize that Kai Sinat started off a little bit differently than his fellow members of AMP. He was one of the few people that I know that attempted to make funny Facebook and Instagram skits. Siri, shut up. Kai shut the fuck up, you thought ass. You get no every time you go to school. Do y'all remember the Vine and Instagram video era? That was quite a time to be alive. And during Prime Vine days, one person's skits ran the platform. The good part about Kai is that his personality never changed. In his older videos, he was highly energetic and very likable, and he took this personality and ran with it. Eventually, he brought his personality over to YouTube, but I will say that his rise to fame can be attributed to the grind that he put in. And one thing I will say, his voice or face has not changed one bit since 2018. But his energy hasn't either. And with time, he started creating prank videos doing the stereotypical all caps titles with Gone Wrong that took over YouTube. But Kai was on a mission. He kept this level of content going for two years. And while he had fairly inconsistent uploads for a small amount of time, moving to college and uploading his pranks became the beginning of his amazing career. A lot of people think that AMP made their members careers. Every member was successful and had their own audience before AMP was started. Except maybe Chris, but he was their editor. And we'll get into that in a moment. AMP only elevated their members, like how Kai's content elevated. His extreme college ding dong ditch pranks were the first real videos he made to take off. And with nearly all of his videos being pranks, they led to a consistent six figure view count on most videos he uploaded. But no one knew that he was getting ready to kick in the second gear. And that gear set when he dropped out of college. Emotional. <laughs> Dropping out changed his life. And from then on, he really began to blow his career up. Prank after prank, challenge after challenge, Kai was hungry and he was building an absolute empire, averaging nearly half a million views a video before he eventually got recognized by the group that he is in now. Phantom reached out to him and they collaborated. Kai now went to stream on Twitch in 2021 and as you can see now, Kai Sinai is FaceTiming Drake, hanging with Uzi, he's also the most subscribed streamer of all time on Twitch and he also got banned from that same platform. Kai has also not slowed down any of his content, so I hope he doesn't feel a massive sense of burnout with how consistent he's been for years. But Kai, congratulations. You made it, my boy. Just like your homeboy, Davis. I think Davis is the butt of every joke in the group. And from the videos, he seems pretty easy to pick on, which is why everyone plays with him. After all, he scared his audience with beef with Duke Dennis. But I'm always in that just fall back in situations. And I'm just letting y'all know right now, I'm not, I'm not gonna just fold every time, bro. He's clumsy. Bro. And he seems like he would have been good at Smash Bros. But if you're black, then you know that cooking someone is a form of black love. Skin tone, chicken bone, leave me alone here. Because Davis, he's a great member of AMP and an original member. He's held true to his character through all this time. He's what I would call the average guy. Don't let that stop you from watching him because Davis's content and personality is entertaining. He's laid back but funny when he wants to be. I think he's like the extroverted introvert. And from growing off of 2K content on Twitch and eventual reaction content, Davis has put in the heavy grind on both these platforms. During his old days, he was a respectable 2K content creator, often giving his fans tips on the best builds for the game and playing against fellow creators at some point. Watching Davis grow has been amazing. He's actually grown to the level where he now collaborates with Gideon, plays pranks on rappers like Akon, and even got to enjoy spending some time at the NFL Combine, where he got to showcase his lack of Athleticism, but speaking on athleticism, I feel like we have to mention Duke Dennis. D Block Duke is the pretty boy of the group, but also the uncle. 
If it isn't him taking your girlfriend, it's him displaying his insane athleticism for a content creator in general. This fame did not occur overnight. He actually started off by marching with Martin Luther King. <laughs> But Duke also started out his career playing 2K, which 2K was the game you wanted to play if you wanted to grow as a black YouTuber or streamer. Majority of all of AMP started off by playing 2K. Duke then has set himself apart from the rest, and that was with his relatable big brother personality. I feel Duke right now brings a level of comfort to his audience that content creators don't normally bring, and that's that big brother aspect. And Duke then has never put on a mask for his content, as he always kept it real with his audience. Eventually, over time with his grind and his storytelling and his vlogs, he eventually became one of the top streamers in the 2K community and began getting recognized on YouTube as well. After all, he's one of the founding members of AMP as well, so someone saw the potential in him already. Not only is he engaging with his audience, but he shows that people born in the 1800s can still be fun. And one thing you can say about Duke, he's often seen with his original circle, so it shows how deep his loyalty runs to his brothers. But I think what mostly racketed Duke to fame was the words that we all know and love today, Riz. A lot of content creators blow up and become Hollywood. It's good to see a creator bringing his day ones up with him. And because of that, you will never feel that sense of being lonely. They get that as a result of leaving their original friends behind to make new fellow friends. Fortunately, Duke manifested fame, women, and money, and became a man that if your girlfriend follows on Instagram, you should probably break up with her. Your man look like he, he, he can do something. You that <laughs> However, a man whose music might snatch your woman is Chris Next Door. I feel Chris is the low-key comedian and musically gifted member of the group. I want to be one of the few creators to recognize that this man is actually musically talented, even to the point where I personally enjoy him for his music more than I enjoy his content. That's not to say that his content's bad, because it isn't by any means. He often brings life to the AMP videos that he's in, and I'll say this. Big shout out to 21 Savage for bringing the potential out of Chris that Chris himself likely didn't realize that he had. Shout out to Chris, bro. Shout out to Chris. Keep screaming. Chris had a bit more interesting of a career start than the other members did. He was actually the editor for most of AMP's older videos. He didn't appear in the channel until after a couple videos had been uploaded, and he also has a channel that I rarely see uploads to. I can tell that Chris is the more laid back member of the group, which also could possibly be what took him a little while to appear in AMP videos. He also seems to be on his lonesome, even if it's in streams. But it's oftentimes when you're alone that you cook the most heat. And Chris is on a mission now. I think he's brewing and preparing for a major jump in his career soon. But at the early days, Chris is going to blow up one way or another. Maybe soon, he can make moves like Agent. Agent is the well-known money man of the group. This man is always making financially responsible decisions. He's investing into properties, having nice car builds, and overall just living true to his nature. And I think he looks like the average black anime fan. But I noticed he's the responsible big brother of the whole group. He's also always giving free game on his podcasts. But before podcasts took place, I remember watching Agent, and he was big as hell. With time, he eventually lost all of his weight. Now this man gives Duke a run for his money. So congrats to Agent for that. In the beginning, he was eating a lot of beef, but eventually the only beef he had was his beef with Pretty Boy Fredo. And that was a beef to remember too. It was one of the few beefs I've ever seen that was one-sided. And that one side was in Agent's favor. Agent has a different personality from everyone in the group. But his mindset is a business mindset. And that's what makes him successful. And will keep him successful even far after YouTube. Agent is also the first YouTuber that I've ever seen that hit puberty backwards. Listen how deep his voice was before now. Spawn sends me a challenge, I play that person. Now the whole point is that I'm meant to be facing you guys and to see how well my record holds up. No one thinks they could take me. Let's pull up to the track. We can do it, bro. Let's pull up. To huh? So because of his work and his drive, he brought all of these men together to create one of the best content groups today. But with a plan, you need someone that can help execute it, which is where fandom comes to play. Phantom's a mastermind. While Agent technically created the group, Phantom was the member that did the recruiting. For example, Duke, I met Duke at 50 subs type shit. Like, I pulled up to his stream and shit. Like, yo, bro, you got it going on. Hit me up after the stream. We gonna work. Feel me? Like, Kai, like, the whole story with Kai was crazy, too. Um, Davis, too, was like, feel me? Everybody was mad, small and shit. I was always, like, the trying to, like, like, playmaker. 
and he is also musically talented and I think he could make an honest real career out of his music if he really wanted to. Another thing I will say is that Phantom is a true entertainer. This man is able to make entertainment out of anything you throw at him and I think it's the way he reacts to things that sets him apart. Dance if you gay, Bruce! What the? Dance if you gay, Bruce! Which makes sense because before he started his Just Phantom channel that we see today, he used to use that channel to upload reaction content. If you look at his growth, you can see that he grew at the average speed of any other YouTuber on his platform. So it shows you that you need to constantly grind to get to where you want to be. You can't expect to blow up overnight and it took Phantom three years to cross 10k subscribers. But eventually with time, he was finally able to leave an impact on YouTube. From there, it was up. However, despite him having a rise, we need to speak about where he was before his rise. I was, I was pop, bro. I had no money, gang. Like, I remember I was going to the um to school. I didn't have money for the books. I used to work in a deli cutting up sandwiches and shit. Phone break. Wow. Bro, it only cost $80 to fix it. I did not have 80 cash. Nobody in my fam had 80 cash to fix that phone game. To get my shit for YouTube, I would sell fake clothes and shit. Mm. To get my shit, I would sell like little uh, Perla B chains, get my shit up to get my, uh, my, my, my hardware. You feel me? I need it. Like Phantom did not have the most money when he was younger. He didn't have the most resources. But what set him apart was his any means possible mentality. He didn't have the tools right off the bat. And with his phone broken, he had to make money somehow. And he did that by selling fake jewelry and clothes. Eventually, he was able to make enough money to buy proper equipment to stream. Thus, he started streaming 2K like the other members in his group. But as you can see, no one plays 2K anymore because that game sucks now. I'll also give Phantom props for being one of the few big Dominican content creators on this platform. And for him to put it on for that community is beautiful. Phantom got to where he is by any means possible, which has taken over the world by a storm. And at some point, we only had RDC to rely on for content which the group is amazing and i personally love that rdc world shows love to the anime community because i'm also a big fan of anime but amp is a group of six black men that really have put in the work and it all paid off they've all spent years grinding to get to where they need to be and look where they are now and they got there by any means possible